Okay, guys. Sorry for being late. Uh, thanks for coming to this meeting. So we had this interesting uh, project to create an online uh, side channel security uh, lecture. And I thought uh, maybe we make this like a real sitcom. A sitcom without actors. We need deep technical details, not just the knowledge um, of how side channels work and, and we need to focus on how to find them and the methodology and like, like the, it's a lot about how you approach things. That sounds like a lot of work. But also like a lot of fun. I think we should just make a difference here, right? There are already a lot of lectures, there are a lot of online lectures, and we really can make a difference here by making this a real sitcom with scenes, with story, with everything. And the people in there learn how side channels work and how to find them step by step. Um, yeah. And we would all be computer science students living in a shared apartment, like in Big Bang Theory or a similar sitcom? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, and I have a great idea for an opening scene. So we enter the flat and there are... So, you had drinks last night? Wait, that's really the first side channel that you want to explain? Well, we need to, to start with real world side channels. Are you excited for the lecture today? Okay, so in this lecture hall scene here, we need to provide the students with basic definitions for information leakage. What is information leakage? What are side channels? And what are side channel attacks? Information leakage? How much definition do you need there? It's in the name, information leakage. It's a very broad type of attack. But side channel, side channel is much more specific and there have been different definitions that were used in the past. So we should start with providing a very clear definition for what a side channel is that we can then use throughout the entire lecture. You mean sitcom? <laughs> sitcom. Well, in crypto we say there's a main channel and there are side channels. These are effects of the implementation of the cryptographic algorithm itself but they are not related to the cryptographic algorithm in principle. I know that definition. So you say side channels are implementation specific leakage. But the problem is that if you say there is leakage in there by design, I designed the algorithm or the system or something this way that there is side channel leakage, is it then not a side channel anymore? What if we don't have an implementation? I mean there are such channels in the real world, right? So are they implementation specific? And we should also keep in mind that we have to visualize this to the viewers. Yeah, so going back to the main channel versus side channel topic. So sometimes the main channel carries also the side channel. Think about a Wi-Fi network where you have an intruder maybe in between observing the packets. So he could observe the packet length and this is already a side channel, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, if you just observe the packet length or the packet size or something, that's not directly a side channel, right? Because uh, just looking at the packet length and then deriving something, something about, about it, that's the side channel. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. For instance, think about encrypted traffic and websites. So we look at the packet length and depending on the size of the packets, we can derive the secret, in this case, which website someone visited or not. Ah, and so you say, 
I couldn't get this without this derivation step because the package is encrypted. Yes. Uh, that makes sense. Another example, uh, a side channel that leaks secrets from the operating system. Mm -hmm. What's the main channel of the operating system? <laughs> You're right. Uh, well, I think that definition won't work for us. When I st studied, I learned that side channels are unintended leakage, but I'm also not quite happy with that definition. Why? Uh, well, isn't every bug unintentional? Backdoors. <laughs> for, for instance, OpenSSL. Oh, um, do our viewers know what uh, OpenSSL is? We can simply say something like, um, when you encrypt data, like when you access a website or something, or uh, yeah, then usually OpenSSL is used. Yeah. The example of OpenSSL, they now document that they don't really care about specific side channels anymore. So is that now a side channel free library just because they don't <laughs> care about it? <laughs> uh, no, yeah. So, well, so the definition that I have been using in the past few years is that you um, side channel attack, you obtain metadata through some channel, and then you derive the actual data from that, and the actual data might be secret. And that's a definition that works, I think, for all the cases that we've discussed so far. And the channel here can be basically any uh, metadata that you obtain, like the packet size, timing, anything. So anything but the real data that you want to get. Exactly. Anything but the real data that you want to get. Um, and then, of course, um, the derivation step is probabilistic, so you will never get 100% probability that you are uh, correct. But with the additional assumptions that you can make, um, you might be able uh, to get a very high probability that you're right, because you're controlling the conditions of the environment around it. That sounds good, but I have one more concern. This should be filmed in a lecture hall, right? So we have a lecture in a lecture, like a le lectureception? True, but uh, what if we actually provide these definitions in a sitcom where we talk about creating a lecture inside a lecture? <laughs> <laughs> so thanks everybody. So remember for the next lecture, the homework for today is everybody should look out for side channels. When you go at home, just look at the different environments, see whether you see any side channel, and in the next lecture, we will discuss that. With that, I'm closing for today. Have fun. See you next week. I think this is a side channel. You can see that there's mail in there. Okay, but I mean, you openly see that there's mail in there. That's maybe information leakage, but not a side channel. You don't derive any secrets. That's true. But you can maybe see that they're on vacation. Mm-hmm, yeah. But wouldn't it make sense to have a flatmate that's not studying computer science? Yeah. Okay, but this is clearly a side channel. Manuel was up all night studying. You can't be sure. Maybe it's just a power nap. Um, but the book would indicate that he's studying. Yes. <laughs> Hey guys. Hi. Sorry to wake you up. Yeah, I was studying and thought, wow, my brain couldn't take it anymore. Mm. I just closed my eyes for a bit and, well, here you are. So I was right. It was a power nap. Um, where were you at? At university. Uh, we were at a lecture and uh, we learned that side channels are everywhere. Side channels? What's that? Let's say there is some secret data that the spy wants. The spy cannot see the data directly, but properties of it. For example, the weight of a safe. The spy does not know what's inside, but if it's empty, it's lighter than a safe that's filled with gold. In communication and computers, these properties can be the size or speed of network packets, radiation of a computer, the power consumption of a CPU. Any effect or metadata that can be observed through some channel. So the spy sees something that is related to the original data. 
for example, network packets. He cannot see their content because it is encrypted, but from the size of the packets, he can infer which website the victim is likely visiting. Usually, the recovery is only partial with errors or with a probability less than 100%, but that's often enough. Mm, I have an idea. Okay. Oh, this is good. This is good. Take a look at this, a side channel. So you can check whether the soil is wet here every five minutes, and then you know whether someone has watered it in the last five minutes. So you mean never, have you ever done that? It's still a side channel, it would work. Yeah, but it's also not secret. Not every side channel has to leak secret information. It's still a side channel. But I could also just stand there and watch and see if somebody goes there and waters it. So, no. But not every side channel has to be useful, right? Maybe you can get the same information through some other way, but it's still a side channel. I still get information through this channel. Okay, so let's edit. Yes. Okay, one less to go. <laughs> mm, I think I have another side channel for the lecture tomorrow. What's that? I think someone had a guest last night. Oh, nah, we, we can't use that in the lecture. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, maybe something less conspicuous. Yeah, like? Eggshells? So that we know that somebody made an omelette. Yeah, maybe. Let's yeah, write that down. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Oh, that was a side channel. Now they know that he's not a German because of the way that he just ordered the beer. Mmm, very good. That's great. Okay, so this means that is the third channel, side channel we have here for our episode. Do we have any others? So, I once had a flatmate who watched a lot of TV. But at some point he was trying to hide it. So, whenever I came home, this guy read a book or did something else. But the TV was still warm, so this is a <laughs> perfect side channel. Very good. Okay, let me write that down. TV still warm. Okay. What else do we have? Um, I might have another one. So what if one of the um, persons living in the flat drinks wine? Hmm. And oh, I have an idea. It's a wine glass on the counter. So, someone had wine last night. Claudio, can you for once just clean the shower after you used it? Shower is wet. Someone showered. Okay, so they are in the lecture, and in the lecture hall, they now discuss real-world side channels, and the professor checks with them, are they really side channels, what you can leak, and so on, and so they discuss them there. Makes sense. Huh? Uh, but I think we should also add examples that aren't really side channels, right? Show the difference. Good point, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so welcome back to the lecture. So last week we discussed that we want to look out for side channels in the environment, and I... Now, I wanted to ask, so what did you find? Did you find any interesting stuff in your environment that looked like a side channel? Lucas? Uh, the vending machine shows a red light when, when it's empty. A red light when it's empty. So, it, so what can you learn from that? It tells you it's empty. Yeah, well, it's empty. But what more? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, because, I mean, if you always use the direct information, of course, it's no side channel, right? But if you, if you then say... Um, yeah, if it hints you whether the person is, I don't know, it could give you information that the, the, the person filling up the vending machine is sick, right? Or, or, I don't know, is a lazy person or... 
I don't know that there was a party yesterday because the vending machine is always empty if, if, if the apartment upstairs has a big party and they always go down and get the, the stuff from the vending machine or whatever. So, so I, I would not per se say it's not a side channel. So, so I was like, yes. Another. In, in winter mornings, when there are footsteps out to your mailbox, it can mean that you have mail. When they're out to your mailbox or? Into your mailbox. So the postman came. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, in the US, they sometimes also have this obvious sign, right? So that you put up a, a sign and say there, that there, is, there is mail. But if, if there is snow, you don't need it, right? Because you have, you have the footsteps. Cool, yeah, that's right. Another one. Uh, bathing map. So if uh, there's no foam anymore, then you can see that someone had a really long bath. Yeah, yeah, kind of, a, yeah, yeah. Not a, not a side channel I would have immediately thought of, but. Uh, <laughs> So you measure the time duration of the bath depending on the foam that is remaining in the in the bath. Okay, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. Other one. It it, it smells in the hallway, and you learn that someone used the toilet. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there, yeah, and you can maybe even do more indirections, but we probably don't want to talk about that. But the and they're all sitting in the lecture hall, and that's basically how the students start to understand side channels. Daniel, is it really necessary to hear all that? Shouldn't we just get straight to the point? Um, so side channels, explaining how to find side channels. This is not just about knowledge which side channels exist and which side channels you can exploit, but it's a lot about how you think about systems, how you approach systems and how you analyze them in a systematic way to uncover these flaws. It's all part of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, the professor would be in a lecture hall and they would go through these so thanks. examples. So, so these were really some great examples, so, so you kept your eyes open very well. So in the next lecture, we will start then actually with the side channels of, of the computer domain, right? So we now talked a lot about stuff that you can see in the environment. So when you can now think of the all kinds of properties that actually a computer has, right? So the computer has power consumption, EM radiation. You can meet, measure something like that. You can measure heat. Uh, there are even works that consider the sound, right? So that a computer might make sound through, through the cooling uh, that you do of the CPU and so on. So there are different effects that, you, that your CPU or that the computer has and that you can actually measure and where you can then infer information about what is going on inside. So some of the most commonly used ones are, are the timing, the power consumption, uh, where you can really learn a lot of stuff and we will do a, a lot of fancy text then uh, next, week, uh, next week based on that. All right, so let me just check my notes. Um, yeah, I actually also have a homework for next week. Um, so you can look up, or you should actually look up till next week, what is the relation of side channel attacks and the year 1943? See you next week. This is really exciting, using actual side channels. Yeah, but it sounds like a lot of work. Okay, now I understand what you mean. Like a sitcom, but with actual content. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we first would have some episodes where we cover the basic things, like for a general broader audience, where you don't have to program uh, at first. And then you go uh, a bit deeper and start with the first software-based side channel attacks, and then you dive deeper and deeper into all these um, micro-architectural attacks. We will also cover fault attacks um, until we covered all these very prominent attacks. But let's discuss that next time. Thank you. Thank you.